Now we're going to start with the cylinder. So one pound ball of clay. So I'm going to try to get three inches across the base and five inches tall. That's the goal. And also the goal is to throw this with a base of half an inch <clears throat> so that next week you're able to trim a foot on this piece. Okay, so the first step <clears throat> is to make a hole into the center here. So I'm going to use two thumbs, bracing, hunkering in, um, hunkering down my elbows against my body, maybe in my hip socket. Wheels going fast and the thumbs go down into the center. And you stop at about half an inch shy of the wheel head. You want to really plunge down into the center with confidence. Um, you don't want to dilly-dally too much. Um, this is one point that tends to throw people off. So um, if you are thrown off, just release your pressure from the clay or take your foot off the pedal. Just stop. Now I'm going to see how thick my base is. Judging the distance of the base of my cylinder. So I stick the needle in, follow it down with my middle finger, pull it out, and that shows that I have a half inch, which is sufficient. So we're good at the base. Watering my hands. Okay, for this next step, I'm going to expand the base of the pot. Okay, so I start by just letting my, my left hand middle finger rest over the edge of the wall. And I'm going to follow it with my right hand middle finger. So my right hand finger is pressing against my left hand finger nail. Think of the left hand middle finger as the tool and the right hand middle finger as the force. These other fingers just try to stay out of the way. So you get your wheel going full speed before you put any pressure on the piece and pull that finger down towards six o'clock to expand the base. So pulling, I'm pulling towards me. Keep in mind you want this base to be completely flat so you want to pull straight back. Next I'm going to compress the base. So starting at three o'clock and moving into the center. This action becomes more and more important with uh, forms with greater surface area. When you get into plates and bowls, um, as the form uh, expands and contracts as it's being heated in the kiln, um, you just want to make sure those particles of clay are compacted so that they can slide against each other. Um, so starting at 3 o'clock, one hand is always assisting the other, so no, no hand is ever acting solo. When I'm finished compressing, sometimes I'll do a little decorative swirl at the base just to finish it off. This just gives people something to look at as they're drinking their water, or their coffee, or their tea, or whatever. This is kind of unapproachable for me. I'd like to start with something a little straighter. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use these fingers. I'm going to make them into a wall against that sponge. And of course, these backup fingers are supporting the main uh, pointer finger that's going to be pushing against this wall here. So the clay in between those two finger walls. And I'm just going to start low and move up that wall. When I get to the top, I'm going to make a little compression. The compression is a pinch and a push. Okay? So you kind of let that sponge sit over that wall. You don't want to push so hard that you distort the wall. You just want to push it down so that, so that you're compressing. And this compression is going to be important next week when you go to trim this piece because if your rim is wonky, it's not going to sit flat and it's going to be harder to trim. So just, just keep that in mind. And wonky rims are beautiful, but when you're trimming, they're a little more difficult. So I'm, I'm trying to set you up for success in this beginning process. So we're going to make the ledge. 
at the base. We're going to start bringing this wall up. And we do that by compressing our fingers together. As the wheel is going around, we rise. So I'm going to call this a pull. And before you proceed, just make sure that you're relaxed, OK? And the way that your fingers come together, they're actually supporting the, this main finger that's doing all the work. Make your hands like a butterfly. And this is really just to connect so that one hand is connected to the other. Sometimes I'll, I'll do this differently, but just know that you want to stay connected. So relax your hands. Let them fall naturally together, supporting this one finger that's doing the most of the work. So the right hand is slightly lower than the left hand. Push them together slightly and compress and then rising. You can see that my finger marks are about a finger width apart and that's, that's optimal. You know that you're working efficiently if your finger marks are a finger space apart. Once you get to the top, Compress the rim. Next compression, starting with a ledge at the bottom. So when I make this ledge, I kind of lean, lean my finger in a little bit. It's not so much straight on. OK. Taking any water out of the center as needed. If the form starts to go out, you can bring it in by collaring the form. And collaring, you don't want to put your whole hands on the form. It's three points, here, here, and here, on each hand, starting low and rising up to collar this clay in. So that was my first pull. I'm going to make two more. We tend to work in threes for a lot of the things we do in here. So making that ledge, butterflying my hands, and when the fingers come together, the outside, the right hand, is slightly below the left hand. Compressing at the base and rising upwards. I give myself three pulls to do this. Really pay attention to how fast your wheel is going around and um, how fast you're moving up the clay. So let's do a little collaring and a rim compression. Make the ledge at the base. Another thing you can do if things start getting out of hand is you can bring in your wooden rib. You can use your left hand on the inside to push against the tool on the outside. Go slow and just kind of rise up the wall. That just kind of gives you a clean slate to start with for your next compression. Making that ledge Making a butterfly with my hands, compressing a little at the base. You can see that my inside finger pops out a little bit as I make this last pull, and I'm exhaling as I rise. A little compression at the top. Okay, finally, I'm going to take my wooden tool, hold it at a 45 degree angle, get the wheel going slow, and just slide up to it, and lean in, and give yourself a little angled foot there, and now I'm going to take this slow and remove that clay. before I cut the cylinder off, 
clean my hands, <clears throat> dry them. Grab your wire tool, wrap it around your fingers until it's, you're comfortable with the width of the wire. Put your thumbs against the wheel head and slide it towards you. You want to move quickly through this next step as the clay can reattach itself to the wheel head. The left hand thumb is pointing down, right hand thumb is pointing up. I wrap my hand around the base. It's kind of a little lift and setting the piece down with uh, minimal distortion. So, there you go. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.